good morning and wow today is actually a very very nice looking day and I just woke up and let's get the day started first of all I hope you guys like the footage of Jeju um, I visited Jeju Island um, it's part of South Korea it's like the Korea's Hawaii and it was really really pretty but I was exhausted from the VAK because it was kind of a tour guided um, vacation but those are really exhausting because they booked the whole day full of activities um, but yeah we're about to introduce you guys to the newest member of the family so let's get this started all right guys this is Sarah I named Sarah after a cat I've had um and the cat that I had was a tabby cat and she passed away um semi-recently and she was the best cat I ever had and my stepdad at the time um was taking care of her f ever since my mom and him split so this is Sarah I'm hoping she's as sweet as Sarah the cat was but this is Sarah the corgi so, um, as you guys do or do not know, I just bought Sarah and it's been maybe, it's been less than a week or almost a week since I've, um, gotten her at the pet store and, uh, she was really, really like, I don't know. So I wasn't planning on buying a pet, but I kind of was because I knew I wanted a female corgi. That was tricolor and she's a tricolor just means three colors black white and brown and um i wasn't planning on buying her that day but the stars just aligned where um they had her and i didn't even think they'd have a corgi but the first corgi i saw was her there's two corgis but she was the cutest one um and she happened to be female happened to be tricolor so you know everything kind of aligned and I bought her that day and uh, she might not be purebred because all he said was corgi you know America they'll tell you Pembroke or cardigan he just said corgi and I was like you know what I don't care if she's a mutt um but she looks mostly like a corgi <laughs> how sweet she is um but yeah she is the newest member of the family and for those of you guys who are new to the channel I already have a another corgi a male corgi um he is almost 10 months old um his name is reese and it's been a challenge raising these two um not that it's hard but there are challenges throughout the day so yeah um the next thing i need to do after client work is i need to feed her and i'll show you guys what i do for that and how it can be challenging <laughs> Um, right now I gotta feed these two separately. Sarah doesn't really care about Reese eating. Um, Reese, I don't know if he, it's a dominance or a jealousy thing, but he's going through, uh, an issue with her eating and, you know, from growling within his crate to, uh, barking at us, low barking at us while I'm feeding her. So yeah, right now she's fed separately. All right, first thing we gotta do is feed Sarah. Yes, I use a food scale for this girl. So Sarah is on, I don't know if this is a cream brand, but it's big in Korea, this brand, um, Royal Canine. This is what the pet store guy recommended. It's just baby dog food, really high calories. I believe it's like 4,000 calories a day, which is really good for her. So yeah, we're gonna feed her her first meal. Um, I also put water in her food, like to heat it up till it's nice and warm, and then put a little water in here. Sarah is eyeing the food. I joke and call her my little round girl. But, yeah, you guys, um, so I close the door, and I'm in another room in my, um, place, because if Reese hears this little girl licking and munching on food and he's not eating, he gets really upset, so... I hope as she grows up, he'll learn to accept that she needs to eat too. 
but for now I'm just trying to avoid the drama and have them eat separately. Um, so now she doesn't really give a crap if he, he's eating or not, but I think because he's been the only child and the only one here, um, I think it might be a dominance thing that he's afraid that she's taking his position in the house. So he's always trying to defend it, so. But, oh uh, yeah, I'm hand feeding this little girl. And the reason why I am hand feeding her instead of feeding her from a bowl is when I first brought her home, she had some food aggression. Um, so I did a food aggression test. So you just put food down on the ground in a bowl and you just pet them. So I pet her head, she was fine with the top of the head. And then I pet her body and she was fine with that as well. Um, but then when I went a little bit, not under her chin, but kind of by the side of her face, she got crazy. Um, she showed the exact same signs my dog Reese would show when he had food aggression. Um, his food aggression has gone from a level like, I would say five to now maybe a one or a two sometimes. So it's getting better. Um, it's not as extreme as some of the cases I've seen on like YouTube and stuff like that. Um, but now Sarah has no food aggression, so I'll show you guys in a sec because I've been testing her and I've also been not overfeeding her but feeding her till she's full. So she's good with that. And now I can touch the side of her face and she's good with that. And I also could take the food away if I wanted to without her hissing at me, but I don't want to do that because I want her to understand that I'm not going to take food away, that I want her to eat. Because if you take food away too much from the dog, then they could, the food aggression could manifest and get worse. Um, and I'm glad I've had Reese to understand how to nip food aggression in the bud correctly. Um, because when he first showed me signs of food aggression, I was kind of mad at him because I'm like, what the heck? I feed you, I care for you, and like, this is what you get me, you know? I was so mad at him, but then I had to understand that, um, while dogs c can be man piss friend, like, there's still kind of a language barrier because dogs handle things differently than humans do. And they don't understand that you are the provider and stuff like that. So that's another reason why I hand feed her is to not only create a stronger bond with her, but so she understands that food comes from me and not just magically appearing from Abel. So, yeah. All right, now that Sarah's put away and well fed and nice and round, let me show you guys. Look at her. I don't know if you could tell, but look at her little belly. How round she gets. Look, look at that. Chow, yeah, well, look. Look at her. Nice and round. And round and nice. She's so round. Um, the, She looks slimmer on camera, but yeah. That's how round she gets. Her tummy is like super, super tight. <laughs> Okay, we're going to put her back and get Reese out. Alright, so here is the older brother, Reese. Come here. Good girl. I mean, good boy. Not good girl. Come here, Reese. Here's a good boy. The only first child who is not uh, an only child. So we're going to take him out. And then we're gonna come back. All right, guys. Reese is about to get an emergency bath because I took him out of his crate, and he smelled so terrible. He still smells really terrible. Um, that means that he that he peed in his crate again. So this doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it really sucks. You know why it sucks? I usually don't find out until he smells really bad and it's rotting or the piss has already been rotting in this crate and I have to clean that out after this. So right now it's gonna be a long morning. It's 10.38, we'll see 
how long it takes me to clean all this. So I guess today's gonna be like a day in the life of me with the dog. So yeah, got this little baby bathtub I bought at like the Korean dollar store. Fill this up and then we're gonna get this bath started. Reese knows he's in trouble. Start sprinting back and forth for a while. That's what he does after his bath. And now I gotta clean the inside of this crate. Really not looking forward to it. I like how Reese gets to relax over there while I'm cleaning up his mistakes. Ah. So I just rinsed the inside of it with water, cleaned it with dish soap. Here's a Lysol wipe. Now I'm gonna wipe the inside with it to kill whatever virus and germs is left in here just real quick all right i want to head to the gym asap so the next thing i'm going to do is make my breakfast before i give reese his breakfast and then get the day started All right guys, so this is breakfast. I got two whole eggs. I got two slices of center cut bacon, two slices of some kind of Korean wheat toast. And yeah, I'm just gonna have this with salt and pepper on the eggs and Tabasco sauce. And this is breakfast. And before I eat, I noticed this girl's just sleeping in her food bowl. Oh. She's special. All right, guys, I just ate. Now it's Reese's time to eat. He has a steamed egg. All this is is two eggs. Um, I put water in there, microwaved it. It's Korean style, Korean steamed egg. And then I have just literally rice porridge, rice and some steak. Um, the reason why he's eating this diet is because um, somebody didn't know that they couldn't feed Reese lumpia and I wasn't there to supervise um, and lumpia is not only deep fried he never has deep fried food so that might have also upset his stomach but I think there was onions in there and onions can be like poisonous to dogs so for the last like um, 48 hours like the first 24 hours he was throwing up all his dog food wasn't keeping food down so then I fasted him um, and then I've tried feeding him again, threw up again, so then I decided just to put him on rice porridge diet. Um, just like, it's very like easy to eat, bland. Um, he loves it and he hasn't thrown it up, thank goodness. Or else if he kept throwing up, I would have had to see the vet. But yeah, he's doing good now. So I'm just going to microwave it before I give it to him. Probably only for maybe a minute, just until it's warm all right guys i just got 
got back from the gym, I did an upper workout. That's how we're looking. And uh, ate some leftover Thai food. Had like some beef pad Thai and some beef Penang curry. Penang, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Penang curry. And now I'm about to do these dishes and I don't know about you but sometimes I like watching YouTubers just do everyday mundane tasks so like laundry cleaning so I'm just gonna take you through what I'm doing so we're gonna wash dishes first So now I am going to make my dog Reese a chicken porridge dish since he is still sick and I'm just going to take you through how I'm going to do this. All right, first we're going to measure out one cup of rice and then depending on how much that looks like I might add more. Now we're going to rinse the rice till it runs semi clear. That looks good. Now we're gonna add five cups of water. One, two, three, four, and five. We're gonna set it on the stove, put the lid on, and we're gonna put it on high heat and get this thing boiling. So I hear the water, it's about to boil. So before that happens, I'm gonna get one, two, three of these legs, rinse them with water, and once that boils, we're gonna stick them in there. You don't have to rinse the chicken, but I just feel like it's better. So we're just gonna rinse it for Reese. Water is boiling, going to add the chicken. Okay, so the chicken is now boiling, um, so I'm going to reduce the heat to like a three or two. Let it simmer for 30 minutes. So the human friendly version would have salt, pepper, garlic, scallions, all that. But with dogs, you can't season the food. Or you could season it with salt, but it's too much sodium is not good for the dog. So yeah, can't put garlic, can't put pepper and all that stuff. Um, and he's sick, so yeah, I just keep it plain. Basically, you can make any dish dog friendly. But what I found is Reese does better with more protein, um, very little fiber, and then some carbs. Um, but if you add too much fiber, they'll go even more often. And if you're trying to prevent accidents in the house, a high fiber diet is not the best for a dog. Um, or else they'll just be going really frequently. Alright guys, having two dogs now, the floors get gross. so. We are going to deep clean the floors. Um, but first you gotta vacuum and clean up all these toys. Yeah, first we're gonna vacuum and then I'll show you guys how I scrub down the floor. This is what the rice porridge is looking like. It's basically done. I also vacuumed the whole house. Believe it or not, I vacuumed yesterday and still got a lot of hair. Um, but we're gonna take the chicken legs out and then let it cool before I shred the meat off of the bone. Next thing we're gonna do is fill this bucket up with just some warm water. All right guys, I'm gonna show you the some somewhat ridiculous way I clean the floors. Um, it may be crazy to you guys, but it's the only way I can get my floors really, really clean. So, this is what I do. I got two, these are just hand towels that I folded multiple times like this under my knees. And then I got one towel that I dip in that warm water every so often um, whenever it gets dirty. And I use two hands and literally scrub the floor on my knees. So. I do it like this and I go through the whole apartment because I bought one of those uh, mop things that you glide across the floor kind of like a Swiffer style and it just didn't do the job. So yeah, 
I go through my whole house like this, and then these things you could just slide so it's easier on yourself. I used to do it bare knee, but it took too long. And by the end of it, my knees were just done. Guys, I'm wiped out. The whole house is finally clean. I don't know if you guys can tell, probably not, but scrubbed everything down from here to all the way over there. The whole kitchen, everything. Um, so now, I gotta clean the house slippers because there's no point in scrubbing your floor squeaky clean having dirty house slippers um, because throughout the week the house slippers pick up dog hair, dander, dirt. So we're gonna clean those off and then finish, maybe finish Reese's porridge first and then take care of the little one. Um, we'll see. All right, just washed my house slippers. Now I'm going to put this little girl in here so I could clean her area and then give her a bath because she smells like Reese did earlier today. I'm gonna zip her up because she's a little escape artist. I think my day is an illustration of why you need to really, really think hard before getting a dog um, because they are a lot of work. Actually, a few times a day because she's constantly making, not accidents, but stepping in her poo. Let's pull this out. Uh, fill up the bathtub. And then we're gonna get her ready. Hey puppy, you understand why I don't let them roam free? If you give them no structure, they'll take advantage of that. Girl, you can get a bath. Sarah is a wild child compared to Reese with the bath. She's very frantic. So, I'm trying to get her used to that, but it's a, it is a process. Okay, come out. Take her little collar off, and then I don't know if I'm gonna be able to film this just cause it's gonna be chaotic. Okay, got a little Sarah. Escape, put her in. So, she doesn't like when I use the cup, so I'm gonna use my hand to calm her down. But last time she started trying to escape. Sarah, no. Sarah, shh. Okay. So last time I had to take her out of the bathtub just so I could clean her without her trying to swim because for some reason she doesn't understand uh, the concept of that the water is shallow. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it this way. Okay. She's such a little, she looks like a little rat when she's uh, um, wet. <laughs> like a little hamster. No shower. It's kind of funny when dogs are wet, they look so not cute. Like little, little runts or something. Most on her is her head. Sarah, shh. Before, looking like a little rodent, and we'll see her after. She's nice and dry. So Sarah's nice and dry. She's still shivering because she thinks she's cold even though she's all the way dry now. But now we're gonna hold her until she stops shivering and then we're gonna cut her nails. So nice and clean. All right guys, chicken's nice and cold so I'm gonna peel all the meat off then chop it up. And I'm gonna keep the skin. I'm gonna keep everything but the uh, bone. And then I'm just gonna dump it um, in the porridge and mix it. All right guys, this is the finished product. I have the chicken rice porridge and then I made a steamed egg um, that I kind of took apart into small pieces. So we're gonna feed Reese this for dinner. <laughs> at least he's not growling at me. He can't leave this because it's so good. I have to actually pull the bowl away. <laughs> 